What's happening guys? Scott from Hornet's Nest and welcome to episode one, season two, Tutorial Tuesday. It is so good to see you and I am so excited to show you what we have in store for today. It's been a while. It, it's been over a year since I said I'd be back. Tuesday will always be ours and here it is on Tuesday providing you with what I am so excited to show you is a Hornet's Nest first ever F5 button box completely working button box replica F5 arm and panel with volume knobs, uh, external stores, even a really cool emergency all jettison cap, push buttons, everything works, the code, the lot. Now, I'm gonna provide you with all the code so you don't have to learn how to code. If, if you're not interested, no stress at all, it's all gonna be down in the links below. Maybe not when episode one airs, just because I wanna make sure it's completely right for you while we build this, but definitely stay tuned on the Instagram and the Facebook for when those links do drop. Now, the coolest thing I like about this button box is there's a little switch on the back here, so it's completely backlightable. And I'm so stoked to be able to show you how to make this. So let's get into it. Let's pop this down here, nice and out the way, and we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna teach you how to design panels from, from scratch, from the base up, and you're only gonna need two programs. You're gonna need a 3D CAD program, and you're gonna need a program already installed with DCS called Model Viewer 2. Model Viewer is gonna give us a front-on view or a cockpit view of the panel we wanna replicate, and you can use any module within the game. And then your 3D CAD program, whichever one you use is completely fine, but I'll be using Fusion 360, and you can go get a hobby version for free that way, the steps I'm doing here, you can follow along at home. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. By the end of these two uh, episodes, part one and part two, you're gonna be building your own F5 button box. So let's get into Model Viewer 2. You're gonna be able to find that in your DCS open beta or stable install folder bin. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you're gonna find Model Viewer 2. It's a gold icon with Model DCS Viewer. And we're going to open that up. Once it's open, you're going to go File, Load Model, and you're going to find the cockpit.edm file. That's under Open Beta, Mods, Aircraft. Pick the aircraft you're using, Cockpit, Shape, and then you're going to be able to find the cockpit.edm of the aircraft of your choice. We're going to be doing the F5E today. Loading that up, you're now in a front on view as if you're the pilot sitting in the cockpit. Now, before you press anything, Go up to the top on my screen, it's just under the help button, you're gonna set camera as ortho. That's gonna give you a straight on viewpoint with no perspective warping. Now we can use that to zoom in and get the correct shot we want. The panel you're referencing, center that on your screen and just move up, down, left and right. Try not tilt the camera down or up, otherwise you will get warping. And there we have a nice front on view of the armament panel. You're gonna take a screenshot with that using Windows Shift S, and then we're gonna take that and save it, and we're gonna take that into Fusion. The best way to deal with Fusion building panels is to be able to put the sketch down, trace around it, build the panel layer by layer, and then at the end, we're gonna have a really nice looking button box. So let's load up into Fusion now, insert that canvas, and then we're gonna be on our way. Okay, to install the canvas, we're gonna press the insert canvas button at the top. We're gonna to find where we saved our screenshot and press open, select the front face. We're gonna scale the canvas up so we can see it nice. And we're gonna press okay. Top right view box, press front to align the view. And we're gonna zoom in. By the looks of it, it's gone and flipped our canvas. We're just gonna press edit and then we're gonna calibrate it. The trick with editing these canvases and finding a good reference point is knowing your key dimension. Now on your newer jets and those that incorporate Zeus rails, you can use the Zeus fasteners because they're gonna be a certain spacing. But unfortunately with this one, we don't have that, but we do know what the dimension of the switches we're using. And these are M12 mounts. So we know that all circular dimensions around a switch should be 12 mil. It's gonna get you pretty close. So let's go here and press Calibrate, I'm gonna zoom in, 
and we're going to select two points around the switch and we're going to type in 12 mil press enter and that there is going to give you a pretty close dimension for the panel we're going to start sketching a new layer of the outline and where we want our switches to be placed What I'm gonna do here, because I don't know exactly where the center of that large knob is, I'm gonna create circle, three point circle. And all you gotta do is select three points of the circle and it will give you the exact center. So all we've done at the moment is we've roughly put down some lines on the sketch and then it looks pretty close. And you don't need to be super accurate with this. What we've done is we've just put some lines on a sketch. We're gonna round those corners to make it look neat. And then we're gonna extrude them out and we already have the front faces built. Alrighty, so there we've got it. In real time, that took me about 15 minutes to do. So it's not too hard, it's simple lines, circles, get the shape down. And then we're gonna press E for extrude. We're gonna pull it out two mil, because that's the thickness of our first panel. And then we're gonna have two very cool looking face panels ready to build onto. So E for extrude, click, click, that's done, two mil. Have a look which way it's going. I'm gonna go minus two just so I can build on this side of the sketch. Enter, hide the canvas, and we are looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is draw the diffuser panel. The diffuser panel allows LED backlighting to shine through onto the text without being too harsh and having hot spots. The thing with the diffuser panel that you've gotta be really careful about is that the nut that holds your switch to the mounting bracket or the mounting plate needs to be accommodated in that panel, otherwise it's gonna fail on it. So if we look at one of our switches, this nut here needs to have a 17 mil house around it or 17 mil ring. So that's on this panel is where we're gonna put that ring. So on the back of each switch, I'm gonna put 17 mil to give it ample space and then we're gonna extrude it out. Hey, look at that. Now we have, oops. And look at that, we now have two nice looking panels. So these two panels will be glued together. But I like to make things look nice in Fusion while I'm building just because it gives me a bit of inspiration. So let's pop a bit of black paint on them. That way we can see them come to life. So 
So now we have the black paint on, we want to engrave that black paint off. And the best way to engrave it is to have professional looking graphics and text. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to pull up our trusty canvas and we're going to start tracing around the text and the pictures. Now, rule of thumb for the text, any panel names, and we're talking about the electrical panel, the sensor panel, the FCS panel, any panel name that you see, it's generally on the modern jets you see that, it's a five mil height text. Any switch name is four mil, and any switch position is three mil. So just have a look out for that when we go through and insert the text and you'll see what I mean. But it really gives you that professional looking vibe and you don't notice it until you know that they're actually different heights and then you'll see it all the time. So let's get into it and start drawing the cool stuff now that we've got a nice looking panel. So we've got most of the graphics done. We're gonna jump into the text and then we're gonna engrave it into the panel. So remembering what I said, four mil height for the switch name and three mil height for the switch position. So let's finish this off and get this thing built. Alrighty, so I've just finished finalizing the graphics and the text and tweaking it, making sure it looks great. But what's happened is Fusion crashed, I lost all my progress, so I had to redo it, as well as I lost the diffuser panel. So you're not gonna see them just yet. I'm gonna engrave, I'm gonna redraw them, and then we're gonna get straight into making the back plate. But we're nearly done, we're so close. So let's get into Fusion, pressing E for extrude, and we're gonna start selecting the different bits of text. Now I do this in a two-step process. I select the text first, and then I select the graphics. I'll cut the text or the graphic, it doesn't matter which way you do it, but do them as two separate functions. 
one, it will save computing power and like speed, but two, it's a bit of a fail safe. So if you do select the wrong thing or you miss click and you lose all your work, it's not too bad, you're not losing at all. So let's select all the text. Oh my, it looks incredible. Look at that, that is looking very, very clean. Let's, all right, let's get back into opening the engraved SketchUp, E again, and let's do all the graphics. Oh, I am super, super stoked with that. That is exactly how I wanted that to come out. I, I'm, I'm really happy. And if you're following along at home and you're doing the exact same thing, I bet you're happy with yours as well. So let's go canvas. Look at that, it's pretty close. You, you definitely can't complain, especially that F5. That F5 looks incredible. So let's hide the canvas again because our work looks too good to be blurred out by the canvas. Press A for appearance. Grab a yellow smooth powder coat paint and let's just go color a little bit in and really finalize it all. Hey, <laughs> look at that. That's cool. I'm very, very pleased with that. What we've got to do now is fix up the diffuse panels. I'll see you when I finish that up and then we're going to build the back panel. All right, so we're back from making the back panel. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Save your work. You're going to learn something from Scott today. Save your work. So let's get back into Fusion, design this back panel, and then we're going to go from there. But before we do that, I need to have a chat to you about what the back panel entails. It is the... It's, it's, a, it's the support, it's, it's the mozzarella on a pizza, it holds it all together, it's important. And if you don't get the back panel right, you're not gonna have the best experience putting switches in there. And what I mean by that is, you'll notice on all your toggle switches, you've got these little registration keys in there. And that is to stop the switch spinning in place. It keeps it sturdy, it stops the nut needing to be the thing that keeps it orientated. You'll notice it on these uh, rotary switches as well that we're using for the external store switch. They've got a little dot or not a dot, but more of like a pip that's gonna hold it in place. And especially these ones, you don't want these ones rotating out of position or orientation. So you're gonna see me put a lot of these keys in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a document, whether it's in the next couple of days or coming weeks, but it's gonna be available to everyone. And it's how I design back panels. And it's gonna have my registration keys. And it's a common size that I've come across. So don't stress about needing the dimensions now. They're gonna be on the screen, but also I'm gonna have a little document for you eventually. That's gonna have all the switches. So let's get into Fusion. Let's load up the canvas. We're gonna come around to the back just so I can draw on the back of the panel. New sketch and we're gonna start tracing.
There we go. We're going to extrude that out. 3 mil because that's the acrylic we're using. Press OK. And look at that. We have a very cool looking panel system. That, that's it. it. It's pretty much done. I told you we'd be able to make it. It's not that hard. And the coolest thing now is we're going to just build a case for it at the back and you can really build that however you want. Uh, I'm not going to show you how I build mine because it would take a couple of hours and you build it how you want. There's, there's no right or wrong way how to build these panels at all, especially the cases. If you want to put a lot of electronics in the back, you're going to need a big case. If you don't have all that much electronics, you don't need as big. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tweak a couple of things. We do need to still build the knobs, but hey, maybe that's another tutorial. And then I'll see you very soon for the final reveal. And I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Alrighty, welcome back. The case is done and before we have a look at it, I want to give you a bit of an idea of what I did. The intention was to be able to house an Arduino for the electronics and the wiring. I wanted ample space so it didn't get too hot because I know this thing's going to be working hard. But I also wanted to add something really cool and by no means is this a requirement, but I wanted to put backlighting into it. So what I've done is I've added a bit of shelving inside the case to accommodate LED strip lighting. And then I'll control that with a switch on the back. That way during the day, don't need it. During nighttime ops, we've got a really cool looking instrument panel. So let's get into it. I'm really excited to show you this. Here it is. It's incredible. It, it, it's one of my favorite panels I've ever made. We've got the case. We've got a top hatch that allows us to have access to the Arduinos and the backlighting and all your wiring. We've got an emergency all jettison cap. That way I don't inadvertently drop all my stores because that's going to be terrible. We've got as replica as they get knobs and it's all in one perfect package and I just can't believe it. So let's start removing some of these panels so we can see inside. So this is the case. Let's hide the browser. The first thing you're going to notice with this case is it's split in half. The reason for that is so you can go 3D print it at home. Not everyone is going to have a massive industrial size 3D printer at home. So it is designed specifically for your smaller print plates. Then the, the hatch on top, if we hide that, allows us to access all the electronics inside. We've got the mounting holes ready to take some heat inserts for an N4 screw. Then we've got some access holes at the back for your power cables, USB cables, and the rectangular section we see at the back is for a rocker switch. I've popped in some suction cup mounting holes on the bottom so it can stick to your table, but as well as I can make a custom build plate that then locks in with that key style locking mechanism. We've got a 45 degree chamfered shelf here. This allows the LED backlighting to shine towards the center of the panel. You're not going to get any harsh areas of light and darker areas. The back panel seats into the case. That way you don't have any backlighting leaking out the sides. So I really think we've done well with this. Now what I like to do with all my 3D models, I like to render them. Fusion has an incredible rendering system and it just looks so cool. So the easiest way to get to that is go design, render. It's going to take you into the render viewport. Find a view that looks cool. And you just press in canvas render. And that's about it. And there we have it. It's done. I can't believe episode one, season two is complete. Stay tuned for part two where we're going to build it and code it. And if you're not too interested in learning how to code, I'm going to provide that code for you. You can use that on all your other projects. It's not just F5. I'm going to provide you a generic code that I wrote myself that just can be put into any button box. As long as you follow my wiring diagram, you're going to be okay. So until I see you next time, enjoy your flight simming, stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.